Hey there, I think we're live and it's nine o'clock. That's pretty punctual. So as usual, I'm going to get the video up on my computer so I can have a look at comments and stuff. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Heather Boyd Wire. Welcome. I do a live stream every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time because we're in Montreal, Canada. And uh, if you want to hop on the comments and let me know where you're watching from, that would be great. I'm just going to put this back a little bit. And as usual, I start by just uh, talking to you guys a little bit, and then I'm going to do a little close-up DIY thing going on. And today we're going to do some scrapbooking embellishments. And just let me hop over to my channel and just see if I can see the video over there. And as usual, um, you can watch this the replay play on YouTube anytime and it, something new that they have is you can actually uh, watch the live chat as well in the replay which is something that they never used to offer so that's fantastic I'll just make sure my sound is off over here perfect so I can see and there's a bit of a delay so I'm not going to look too much at the screen unless I miss some of your comments and if you're hopping on live uh, just a comment and let me know who you are where you are and if you're watching the replay, you can comment underneath as well. And I'll, I'll watch the uh, comments uh, as I get notifications. So just to hop right on, today we are doing these scrapbooking embellishments. Now, this was a project that, um, I'll show you another one here. So I've been making greeting cards like this for quite a few years now. I actually started by um, doing like a watercolor background uh, because I sell uh, some greeting cards at the Viva Vida Art Gallery in the Point Claire Village in Montreal. And what I do for those cards is I actually paint a watercolor background and then I make a wire embellishment to go on top. Hi, Rebecca, welcome. I'm glad you're hopping on, that's awesome. And uh, today we're doing these wire uh, embellishments for cards. I'm not going to do all the designs today, uh, but I just wanted to give a big shout out to uh, my friend Wendy, who goes by Mama Quirky on social media. We actually have become, we became friends over Twitter, and now we're in-person friends. And every time I go home to Ottawa to visit, um, I often get together with her and we do crafts. So I got together with uh, her on um, Saturday, Saturday night, and we actually, she made uh, some beautiful cards. She made a butterfly and a dragonfly and a key. Hey, Claire, how are you? Welcome. I'm happy you're on. We're doing the, we're doing these, uh, not the full cards tonight, but we're, I'm going to troubleshoot some new designs for these um, embellishments. So these are two cards that I did, and I was just shouting out um, my friend Wendy, who goes by Mama Quirky on, uh, I guess, Twitter, Instagram, and um, maybe on Facebook as, as well. But you can actually see uh, she's been doing a few uh, little wire projects as well. You could see her as she picks up her work. I reposted on my Heather Boyd Wire Instagram. So you'll see she did a few mixed media cards and she did the cutest little wire balloons. So I'm actually going to show you guys how to do those too because I thought they were adorable and those were inspired by her. And then last week, of course, we made these keys out of uh, wire. I troubleshooted those and so we actually made some cards and I put the keys on top. So that was really cool. So what, I'm, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera as usual. I'll try to keep an eye on your guys' comments. And uh, like I said, if you guys are watching the replay and have any questions or any special requests, just let me know. So just bear with me as I flip my camera around. I just got to make sure it's going to work. Get rid of this box. Pop that down there. And last week it seemed to work okay, so let me give it a try. Flip the screen and we'll just wait we're gonna flip the screen okay this should work so we'll see my tools here yep there we go so we've got the tools let me move these are the cards if you want to see the cards again and I'm going to show you guys some sketches that I did so 
Actually, this Saturday, I'm, I'm going to do a DIY how to make the butterflies. So look out for that video on Saturday. And then in a future video, I'm going to do the flower. But in the meantime, I'm going to do a few simple shapes. And also, these are just little sketches I put in my agenda. I have a friend that wants these wire faces so I thought it would be really fun to try some of those so what I'm going to do now hey Sharon how are you we're I'm just sort of introducing the project we're just uh, going to do some wire embellishments so here are a couple sample cards and I actually have another video where I show how to make the mixed media cards um, so I'll definitely link that up in the comments below this uh, the video for the butterfly I'm going to do on Saturday and then another time I'll do the flower so today we're going to do some simple shapes and what I'm going to do is I'll just show you guys a, a different way to make the cards because I usually do them with a kind of a sweeping kind of motion like that like four pieces of paper and that video I'll link up below but this is a, a simpler design and actually my friend Wendy gave me these beautiful this beautiful scrapbooking paper we kind of mixed and matched our scrapbooking papers so what I'm going to do for this one is just stick that one on there and I have this two-sided tape but unfortunately the the um, thing broke so I just have to do it kind of by hand let me just see if I could get the tape oh now it's all stuck together of course for the video oh well let's see what I can do with that so it's just a two-sided tape but the dispenser broke so what I would do is I would just flip this over and I have done this with um, glue stick but the trouble with the glue stick it buckles the paper like it makes it kind of bubbly and buckly so I like to use the two-sided tape because it doesn't ruin the paper so I would just put a little bit of two-sided tape and I would just center this one on here and what I'm going to do for this one is I'm actually going to put on the key that we made last week. So whoever was on the live stream last week will remember that we made these beautiful keys and that video is still up online. And because I didn't do any little extra wires that can poke through the paper, usually I plan ahead and, and do that. But because I didn't do that, what I'll do is just cut a couple of pieces of, of this wire. So I'll just cut, this is 24 gauge wire that I'll use to attach it. And I'll just make little wire kind of use like that, little wire loops to attach it. So if ever you have like a little embellishment like this already made, you know, sometimes you can buy them at the dollar store, like old pendants or any old little doodads that you see that you think might look cool for scrapbooking or for cards, you can just make some little wire use like that. And then find a strategic place to attach it. So here I think I'm going to just attach it right here. So what I would do is just poke one little hole on either side where I want the uh, the wire to go through. So we I poked, it's hard to see, but I just poked a couple little holes together there. And then I'll put this here and I'll do the same here. Maybe just on either side of this key card here. So we have a few holes and then what we'll do is we'll just put the key here, take our little wire U and stick it in the right spot and put the wire through. It's a little tricky. Sometimes it's easier if you cut one length a little longer than the other. So we're just going to pull it through and then on the back you're basically just going to bend it either way. So you just kind of bend it one way and the other, and that's going to hold it in place like that. And then you'll do the same down here. Oh, it slipped. I didn't quite put it in the right place, but you want to put it in a place that doesn't really, where it won't really slip. And then here, I'll just put one on either side. Right there. Okay, and then I'll flip it. And then we'll just stick it on there. And then what you would do, just center that a bit, we would just stick it on the card and then that would make your key card, which is really cute. So we can use the keys we did last week, 
maybe not the ones with beads because you don't want it to be too fat. So you want to be able to send it through the mail so you could do something like that. And so then to do some other embellishments, just let me look at my sketches. I'll start with some simple ones. So like a little, a little heart one. And I generally use the 20 gauge wire to do some of these because it's a good middle size. It's cute, eh, Sharon, with the key? Yeah, no, it's really, it works out really well. So to do a, just a simple heart embellishment, and you guys let me know if you've ever done scrapbooking or if you've ever done anything like that. I'm really curious to know if you guys have done that before. And so to do the heart, I've done a lot of wire hearts before, but just to keep it super simple, you can just start like that. And then I find the cone really handy to do spirals. So if we go like this and do pull it, push it around a couple of times on the cone, you could use a marker if you don't have a cone. So we'll just wind it around a couple of times. And you want these to be about the same size. So if you go like that, if you see one is shorter than the other, you might want to go ahead and trim them the same size. So they'll be more or less even like that. And then what I like to do is take my round pliers like this and we just bend this around. You want like a good half inch or something that's going to poke through the paper. So the idea is you just kind of twist this around and then you want to adjust it to flatten out your spiral. Now I do have a lot of videos where I make this type of spiral thing. So I could try to find another one to link it up to make it more clear. But if you just kind of hold it with the pliers and then bend it in, like work it in a little bit. I used to and then I stopped for a while, but I'm getting back into it by combining bullet journaling, scrapbooking and art journaling. Oh wow, that sounds super interesting. I've heard of bullet journaling. I've never done it. And I have a friend that has a really beautiful art journal that she calls it her gratitude journal, my friend Allison, and it's absolutely beautiful. She does painting in it and collage and all kinds of stuff. So once you have your spirals like that, you're actually going to just hold this with the flat pliers. And then you want to bend this to the back because if you bend it to the back, then that's actually going to go right through the paper. So we'll do the same thing. We'll just take this like this and bend it back. And then you have your little heart embellishment and these would poke right into the paper. So I actually didn't bring a scrap. Let me just get a scrap of white paper because unfortunately I didn't bring any of my nice scrapbooking paper but I can just show you how it works. So what you would do is I always like flip the paper to the back and then flip this to the back. So imagine how it would look like on the other side. And then you poke your holes where they would be. So I would just poke like, and this wire's a little bit thicker than 20 gauge. So I think I'm gonna have to make these quite big, these holes. Flip it back and then we'll stick these wire ends in like that. Okay, we'll just stick them through. So you see it, it, they get stuck through and they're pretty flat. And then we want to bend that over and then just push these down flat. And like I said, this wire is a little thicker than I would like because it's not as forgiving, but that's the idea. And then it's stuck. So that's the key. When you want to make an embellishment, you want to have like two little extra ends that will act. It's cool, eh, Sharon? Yeah, so if you have two little extra ends that just um, go through the paper, then that will hold them in place. So let me just see what other ones I did. Yeah, you could do a simple spiral and then like a little star. I had an idea for a hand. So, oh, actually, let's do, let's do a little hand. That's kind of cool. So for the hand... Let me get some, how about I get some gold? I'll get some gold wire for the hand and I'll just cut a good size piece. You hear lots of clinking in the background because I have 
a big pile of wire here. So if we, I'll just move that one out of the way. I'm gonna move some of my extra stuff so it's not too distracting. I hope it's bright enough. Let me move my light over a little bit. I don't know if that's gonna help. Maybe I just have to move this a bit. I think it's all right. Okay, so to do the hand, what I would do is just, I have some designs for hand earrings, so it's sort of the same idea. So you want to, like, start, I'll start with the thumb, like that, and I'm just going to do it by eye. So we'll do some fingers, and like that. My stuff always ends up being a little bit stiff. I think it's because I've been doing this for so long that it ends up being like um, really graphic and very stiff in a way, but that's okay, you get the idea. And so you want just like a little hand shape like that. And then you wanna kind of make it a little bit round to make like the palm. So we'll bring that around like that. And then to make it fancy, what we can do is make a little spiral here in the hand. So if we go around like this, We'll just start like that with a little spiral and work it in a little bit and just play around with it like work it in like that. Spirals are so pretty, I love them. And then we'll just go in like that. So once your spiral's done, same idea, you want to take your flat pliers and bend this. Oh, the signal's bad. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, you might have to watch the replay. I hope it's nothing on my end. It seems pretty clear here. So here's this at a right angle to the back and then we'll clip that. So that bit will go through the paper and then this one you can actually kind of end it wherever you want. So we can just, I think I'll just keep it simple and just end it here. It's clear here. Okay, well I'm glad to hear that Sharon. I'm sorry uh, that it's not clear everywhere, but you know, internet is so unpredictable. So here we've, we're gonna bend the other end. So we have two ends that will go into the paper to secure it. Okay, so this is actually super cool and very easy, the hand. So now we'll do the same thing. So we'll flip this paper to the back so our little ends don't get in the way, just to find out where to poke the ends in. We're gonna hold this in place. I'm gonna move my sticky tape. And then put one pinhole where the first wire is and the other pinhole where the other wire is and flick, flip it back. Probably what I'll do after is remove it from these and put them on actual cards, but just to show you guys how they look. So we poke the, those through and then bring it back and push these down. Now the gold wire is a little thinner than the red one, so it's a little bit easier. And there you go. So it's stuck in there. So that's great for scrapbooks and for cards. You can use you can use that idea for lots of different things. And I've done lots of different designs. And like I said, I'll do future videos for, for some of the other designs. But I thought today I wanted to really troubleshoot some of these faces because my friend Diana asked me if I could do some little face earrings. So I did some sketches and I thought I would try two ways. I'm going to try just to, oh, and now my battery's low. So just let me plug you guys in. I uh, just have to see where the end is. There we go. Boy, video really sucks battery because it was, it was at a hundred percent. And in like 20 minutes, it's down to nothing. It's kind of crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'll try with some thicker wire. Love it. Thank you. I hope you could see it. Yeah, it's uh, a little, it's not that, uh, I hope the reception is getting better on your end. It really sucks that sometimes it's unpredictable. So let's give one of these a try. So sometimes it's a little bit difficult to find out where, where the wire starts, but here it looks like we'll just start at the eye there. So I'll just get some and this actually isn't, this is a little bit of a stiff wire, but we'll try it with this wire. And if it doesn't work, well, we'll try something else. This one, I actually want to try to flatten it. So I think what we're going to do is I'll just, 
go with the shape. So it's got like a little, like a little face shape. And if it's a little off, it's all right. So we're just going to do a little shape. Oh, that's a little pointy chin. I don't know. It looks like an elf chin. So we'll just try to fix it up a little bit. And it's really funny because I used to do a lot of these face silhouettes when I first started making wire art. And when my friend asked me to make some earrings like this, Mr. Style, how are you doing? Thank you. Awesome that you're hopping on. That's great. Mr. Style is a fellow Montrealer. That's awesome. So we're going to do a little face here. We're going to see what we could do. And we'll just bring this around like this. And just bring the eye around. And I think this would actually be much better with a different wire, like with a softer wire. This is aluminum. And copper is actually much better for things like this. But let's just give it a try. I think it's going to look like an alien, but hey, you never know until you try, right? So, because the the sketch that I did was a little bit wonky, and then now to actually do the, the figure, it's even more wonky. Sometimes it's actually easier just to do it by eye and not even go by an original sketch. But I'm just going to try it. Just it's It's how you work out the design, and you just kind of go with it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So for the first one, I'll just copy it exactly. And then if it doesn't work out, I'll just do something different. So we're just kind of going with the design. And then I'm actually just going to cut the end right off like that. And maybe at the end, I'll try to actually flatten it. I have to let my, um, my phone charge a little bit before I take it off the uh, cord and I would have to bring it in the other room to flatten it. I have a big machine. It weighs about a hundred pounds. It's called a rolling mill and it actually flattens the wire. So let me make a couple of these and then we'll bring them in the other room to flatten them before, uh, before I sign off. So let's just do this. We're going to go around like this. And the key when you want to flatten something, whether it's with the rolling mill or with a, um, a hammer is you can't have any lines that overlap. So you really want to be careful to make sure that uh, it doesn't overlap. So this is pretty well the same as that. I find it a little bit boring. So maybe what I'll try to do is just bring this wire down. I don't know if it's going to help at all. But if we just bring it down like this, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not. You know what? I think I'm just going to keep this as is. This is exactly the design she showed me, my friend. So let's make the first one just super simple. And this is going to be pretty well exactly like the sketch. And then when we flatten it, we'll see what happens. But now I want to do a funky do one like that because I think that one's super cool. So let's get some of this wire. this It says it's brass. So brass is very similar to copper. So it's much softer and easier to work with than the aluminum. So the aluminum is good if you want to bend like a really sharp angle. But if you want it nice and flowy and soft, the brass is really good or the copper. So we're not going to stick this in the paper because this is going to be flattened after. So let's try something like this one, which is really cool. So it's almost like she has a stylized earring and then it goes up in a continuous line. And this one looks like it has, well, it I think it does have overlapping lines, although you could do it without. But because I'm using a thinner wire, I'm just going to do it kind of exactly how, how it's done here. So it's got like kind of a little curly line thing going here. And in fact, if I wanted to, I could actually trace it on here. But because I uh, I think I'm making it a little bigger than my sketch, so I don't think I'll actually, actually trace it. I'm just going to kind of go like this. So it looks like it goes up to the top of her head and then kind of comes down like this. Yeah, it would be actually really handy to just trace it, but because I just want to wing it, we're just going to do it this way. So we're going to go do like a little eyeball thing. And you know what I might even do is 
I used to do, when I used to do them, I'd actually make like the little circle for the eyeball. So let me just make it a little more fancy to see if this is going to work. So we're just going to make like a, a little eyeball thing. So that looks more like an eye when you do a little circle and the line around it. And then we're just going to go down like this. You don't want it too, you don't want a too big nose either. So we're going to go like that. I actually made Ellen DeGeneres out of wire on one of my live streams. That was pretty fun. But I like these. They're kind of abstract. So we'll just go with the shape here. And then you can actually bend it right to the back and forward. And bend it to make it a little bit looking like a little lip or something. So we're going to go down like here. There we go. And then there's like a little chin thing going. It's not very in proportion, but it's okay. It's the idea. So we're going to see it's starting to look like a face. That's not too bad. And then what I love about this, it looks like she's got like her neck and then like her little shoulder thing going on, which is cool. So we'll just bring this one up. She's got a nice, long, graceful neck. And we'll just bring it up and then down. And then it always makes it really cool when you finish like with a little, a little spiral thing. So let's do the spiral again. And I'll just get, I like to use the Sharpie to do like a little spiral. So we'll just do a little spiral around like that. And then I can get the, now this is ending up being a little bit big for an earring, but uh, some people wear them really big. In fact, when I was making stuff like, this looks like a man wearing a powder. <laughs> yeah, I thought it looked really Victorian as well as Sharon, you're right. No, it's it's really cool. It's true, those powdered wigs, those white ones. Yeah, that's so funny. So we're just going to... And it's amazing how you can express so much just with a line. That's what I love about wire art. It's just uh, really amazing what, what you can do. And one line changes everything. So if we want to... I'm just going to pull it down a little bit more. And then looks less like a wig and more like a like a woman. And it actually turned out pretty darn cool. I kind of like it with the way I did the eye. And so this is this is neat. You could actually do this for an earring or a pendant would be nice. It could be really cool. So there's one like that. And then this one's really cool with the lips. I remember a while ago I did um, some faces with lips like that. So let me try one like that with the lips. And which wire am I going to use? Let's see what I got. Maybe I'll use, I can use the blue one, I guess. I'll just try this. I just, I like this 20 gauge copper wire because it's pretty easy to work with. So let me cut some of this. And then once the iPod's charged a little bit, I'm gonna bring you guys to show you how I press the wire. This was sort of a medium size. I think I'll get a thicker one too. So what I'm gonna do now is let's try something with the with the lips actually I'm, mm, I'm gonna sort of go by that but I'm also gonna kind of wing it depending on what I've done in the past so to do the lips from what I remember is I just let's start actually let's start with the top of the lips so I think that's what I did before boy some of these I haven't done for so long so if we just go like that and if we just do the top of the lips like that, we bend it back on itself. So right away you can see these, it kind of looks like a heart, but it also looks like the top of some lips. And then we're gonna just bend it out like that and bend it out like that. Okay, we'll do this one a little bit more. So Sharon, have you been working on any other creative product projects this week? Uh, have you been doing? How's the weather down there too? Because I think last week it was pretty cold. It's just starting to warm up in Montreal now. So let's do the bottom of the lips like that. Bend this around like that. So these kind of look like lips. Oh, I know you use round nose pliers. Are there any other kind that you recommend? I watched someone in a while ago. Chain nose pliers. Chain, I, 
I'm not even exactly sure what's the difference between chain nose pliers and flat pliers. I use these small round nose pliers and then some bigger round nose pliers. And these are just flat pliers, you know, with the teeth. And those are pretty well all the pliers that I use. You know, I find those ones um, are the most useful. But, and I know some people use, like, for making necklaces, they use special, like, crimping tools and that. But I, I try just to keep it simple. So this one, this one's really stylized. So I think I'll just kind of go exactly what they're doing here, just to see how it turns out. I always like to kind of go by my sketches to start. And then after, I might, like, go off on, on a tangent and do something different. So... You always want to make sure if it is an earring to hang, like have a little loop to hang it up. So these ones could be earrings or embellishments, I guess. Unfortunately, my health hasn't been good lately. Today was really, oh, bad morning. I didn't know. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Sharon. Thank you so much for making an effort to come on, to come online. I wish there was something you could do to, to feel better. Hopefully the warm weather is going to help because the cold certainly cannot help at all. So here, let's just wiggle this around and do the eye around like that. Okay, we're just gonna make a little, this one's really, this one almost looks like Picasso. It's very abstract. So we'll do like a little eye thing. And the, uh, this one's almost looking a little bit too abstract. Sometimes when you get too crazy, it doesn't really look like much anymore. So <laughs> I'm not even sure what this one's doing, but it's a little, it's a little bit funky. So I, I don't think I'm going to do much more with this, but that's sort of like the mouth and the eye. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to make another flat one. And we're going to try to press it. So I think that's what we're going to do next because um, I usually try to keep my live streams not too long. So let me do a little, just another little abstract one, and then we'll press it, and then you guys can see how that works. So this is actually a gold wire that I wanted to try to see if it would work if I pressed it. Mm -hmm. So for this, we really have to make sure none of the lines overlap. And what I'll do too is if I make more of these faces, I'll post pictures on Instagram so you guys can see what I do because um, it would be interesting to see how they turn out. And at least you're on the on the ground floor of seeing how they're done, so that's kind of cool. So if we just start with like, why don't we just start with the nose then? We'll start with the nose. And so we'll go up like that. And then the idea is we want to just keep it super simple. And even if it doesn't look exactly like the other one, let's just try to keep it, keep it a little bit simple. And I'll just, I'm just gonna kind of play around with it. And then we're gonna see how well that it presses. Okay, so we're gonna go around here. And we'll just do like a little head thing. Keep it super simple. And I actually have to be careful not to make it too wide because the thing I have to press the wire is not very wide. And I don't really have a setup to hammer the wire. So we're going to try it like this. So we're going to bring this down like this. So there's the kind of the nose and the eye like that. It's going to look a little bit like a skull, but... That's okay. We're just going to play around with it here and see what we can do. So if I go like that, okay, we'll just bring that around and maybe I'll just make it a little bit funky and I could do another spiral or something. How about I just bring it around? And then just bring it back because you can bring the wire back along itself as long as you don't overlap anything. So let's just kind of bring it down like that. And then we're just going to do another little spiral thing. And it doesn't really look like 
too much, but I think it's going to be fun at least to see how well that it press, you can press it. So we'll just give that a little cut. And I will just finish the spiral. And like that. And then what I'm going to do, it looks kind of funny. <laughs> what all? Judy, hello, are you just hopping on? We're just getting ready to wind down here, but you could definitely watch the watch the uh, the replay. And what we've done is we've done a few little embellishments. So these are two flat ones that I'm actually going to try to press like that. And then what I'll also do is I'm going to do one just a little spiral to see you so you guys can see how I press like the spiral. So we'll do one more thing that's just like a little spiral and we'll just start at the bottom and work our way up like that. Okay. Oh, nice emoji. I like that one. Yeah, so we're just making embellishments. If you're just hopping on now, these are these are cards that I made with my friend Wendy on the weekend with the wire embellishments. And I'm going to do videos for the butterfly and the flower. The butterfly is going to be on Saturday. And then now we're just experimenting with making ones that are more like um, uh, flattened wire ones. So what I'm going to do is just make this spiral. We'll bring it around. This wire is quite stiff, but this is the one I usually use to make bookmarks. And you need it quite stiff to hold its shape. So we're just going to go like that. Just to give you an idea of how, well, how they, uh, they flatten like that. Okay, so we'll just go like that. And things like these are really cute in scrapbooks is doing like just little spirals and little embellishments. Like see we did these, um, the hand and the heart. So now we have a flat one. And if you did want to do it, stick it in the scrapbook, you just take this and bend it at a right angle. So you'd have a little end to stick through the paper. See we just stick the wires to the back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to bring these to flatten them and I'm hoping I'm not going to lose you guys. Bear with me. So I'm going to flip the screen. There we go. So I'm going to flip the screen. I'm going to unplug my power. So hopefully this is going to work. So please don't get dizzy and I'm going to bring you over to where I flatten the wire. Whoop. Okay. So there we go. So we're going to bring you over. I'm hoping I'm not going to run out of battery. <laughs> Beautiful Heather. Thank you, sweetie. That's so sweet. So I'm going to, oh, it's dark. There we go. I'm in my basement. And what I have is I have a flattener, like a wire flattener. So let me flip the screen again, just to show you guys. Yeah. So this is called a rolling mill and it actually is what I use to flatten the wires. So what I'm going to do is stick I'm going to stick this in here and then I I don't know if I could do this with two hands so let me what can I do you stick it in there and then you take this and you wind it around so let me just set this up I'm going to try to set it up like this so you guys can see oh I hope it doesn't fall so just excuse me if it does fall and I'm going to try to stick this through there we go. And so I don't know if you saw, but here it came out the other end and it's flat. So that is the fun thing. So let me just do one more. I'll do the head, the face. Whoops. Sorry, guys. Hopefully it's going to work. This is a slightly thinner wire. So you can you can adjust the settings of this. So let me just do this. So here is this flattened one like that. So I'm going to flip you guys back. There we go. So this was a crazy ride because <laughs> I don't usually bring you guys around for a walk, but uh, it's cool. eh? So that's a rolling mill. It's, it's a very expensive machine. Well, I bought it, oh gosh, 25 years ago. So um, 
I don't know if you could even get them. I got them at a, I got it at an industrial uh, place for, sorry, I'm just coming back to my, my work table. I got it at an industrial jewelry at, uh, making place with all kinds of tools and stuff. But it's super handy because I, I remember when I first started making bookmarks, I tried to flatten them with a uh, hammer and it's so hard on your hand. It really, uh, it really is hard on your hand. So I find with the, um, with the press, you'll see like it, it's uniform, it's beautiful, it has a really nice effect. And um, I do have my wire art and jewelry course that I show you how you can actually do that with a pasta maker. But the wire has to be very soft to be able to do it. Otherwise, you'll, uh, you'll ruin your pasta makers. So, so it worked for the, really well for the spiral and for the face. And then the other ones, uh, this is a thinner wire, so I didn't flatten that one. And you wouldn't flatten that one because it's got overlapping wire. And then here are the two that I attached that we did. And they're attached to the back. And so you could use that same method to do like the butterfly and so if you guys um, look out on Saturday I'll have a video how to make the butterfly one and if you have any requests for other kinds of embellishments you want me to make uh, just let me know uh, just put in the comments below uh, if there's anything you want me to make and um, some of you are already members but if you're not already a member of my Facebook group the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. I'll put a link in the description below. We have a lot of fun in that group. Everybody's getting to know each other. It's a really great group where you can share photos of your work, anything sort of wire, art, and jewelry related. And, um, and I do these live streams every week. So if you have any ideas for other projects for the live streams, uh, definitely let me know and don't hesitate to message me on Facebook or send me an email if you have any questions about wire art and jewelry making and Sharon we got to talk more about what you want to do with your your work and your your YouTube and all that stuff there's just so so many possibilities it's a little overwhelming sometimes with all the social media uh, outlets and all that kind of thing but uh, but it's fun yeah M Marvelicio cute oh thank you so much that's awesome and Judy, if you missed the beginning of the uh, live stream, be sure to hop on and watch the replay. And I'm going to head off for now. So thank you guys so much.